Hey everyone, so in today's video I am trying out the Ohuhu brush markers. They were launched in the US last month, but they just came out this month in Canada, so I finally got my hands on them. People have been trying to get me to review Ohuhu markers for years, but I kept saying, oh well maybe, but they don't have a brush nib. If they had a brush nib then I would. And now they do. Woo. I'm at the point where I almost don't even want to bother reviewing markers unless they have a brush nib, with a few exceptions. For example, if it's a dollar store marker that's interesting because it's like, ooh, it's from the dollar store. Or for example, the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers I recently reviewed, those were interesting because it was three markers in one. So if there's something interesting about it, I'll review it, but otherwise I only want to review brush markers. There are just so many brands out there now that I don't really want to waste my time reviewing ones that I'm never going to use. Okay, I don't know why I keep wanting to throw this around, it's just very fun. <laughs> Let's get into the video! Yeah. So the markers come in this little canvas case and it has a little handle. It zips open at the top. Ooh la la. That's Copic. They're sending the police over. How dare you make a marker to rival ours? Ah! If you are coloring on thin paper, please put this pad between your coloring sheets to prevent any bleed through. I need to flatten it out, but yeah, interesting. I usually just use a scrap piece of paper. <laughs> Looks like we also have a little card here. Oh! Special offer! 10% off everything by Ohuhu. And there's some support FAQ stuff on the back. Okay, all right. So as you can see, the caps are colored and have the names written on them. So there's 120 black, R10 pastel pink. Baby, these are not for you. A couple of these do have smudged caps like this one and this one. Not a huge deal, I'm just pointing out things I notice. I also notice this one has a really teeny tiny name, or at least for the, the letters and numbers. It's cool gray two number seven. So it says CG and then Roman numeral 207. So it says Ohuhu art marker. It designates the broadside and the brush side. Plus it has a little colored strip, which is nice because you're not always gonna read these little images, especially if you grab the marker, say this way, you can't see the label, but you can still see that strip. With the Spectrum Noir, they kind of do that. They do this double dent thing, but it's not as noticeable. They also have these little nubs that prevent the marker from rolling off your desk. Nice, nice. I like the swirly pattern on the top of the lid. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So I'm gonna push this aside a bit more. We'll check out the nibs. Yep, it's a chisel nib. <laughs> and the brush nib. Cool, cool. So far I'm liking what I see, but we have to actually test these out. So I'm gonna do some swatches and then make some art using these markers. Okay, I have them all laid out in order, and I found this at the bottom of the bag. Mine is not in the same order as this because I had already laid out most of the markers by the time I found this. So here are my swatches. As always with a lot of marker sets, it's missing a lot of really pale colors and a lot of really dark colors. Mostly it's lacking on the pale end. This cool gray double zero zero is pretty nice, but that's the only super pale one. For darks, this green is fairly dark, but not too, too dark. This red is pretty deep as well. Everything else is kind of mid-tone. Of course the black is dark. So the color range is not the best. They do have 120 different colors though, because they have 120 set. So I'm kind of curious how the rest of the colors look. And I'm wondering if they're going to bring more colors to their brush line in the future because their their markers they've sold up until this point haven't had the brush nib. Aside from these little skinny markers that are water-based, those had brush nibs, but this is the first time their main markers have had the brush tips. So they're probably starting with a smaller selection for now and they'll expand it over time. At least that's what I'm assuming. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to be drawing with these markers. I really have no clue at this point, so I'm just gonna start doodling. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the color chart here for inspiration. We have a lot of red slash pink colors. Also, I don't understand the system here. First of all, R11 is definitely a purple, so it should be in the P category. <laughs> also, the numbers don't really seem to make sense. It's not like it gets darker as the number gets bigger or anything like that. And here we're jumping from more pure reds, some that are a little more on the salmon side over 
over to more pinky reds. Then this vibrant pink is here. I don't know. The, the numbering system doesn't make sense to me, but I guess as long as you have a chart, the numbers don't really need to make sense. It's handy when they do make sense though. Like with Copics, I can say, okay, I have this RV32. I want something slightly darker than this. Oh, RV34. But with these, it doesn't make so much sense. <laughs> I kind of want a character with red hair, like a deep red using these ones. I'm looking back at some of these previous sketches for inspiration. I like that hair. Mm, you know what? Actually, ooh, inspiration found. I'm gonna draw Halle Bailey as Ariel. We don't know what she looks like as Ariel yet, but I'm gonna draw my version of it. Woohoo, yay, sudden inspiration. Woo, okay. I need to think of some kind of mermaidy pose for her. I feel like every mermaid pose in existence has already been done at some point. Maybe she can be singing. I want her maybe, maybe underwater. So I'm Googling flounder fish and they're all brown, <laughs> except one picture. Okay, flounder is not a flounder. He's just a tropical fish. So that works better. <laughs> I'm happy with how this is turning out so far, so now I'm going to sketch it onto a larger piece of paper. Like I mentioned, we do not know what the live action Ariel is going to look like. All we know at the time of this video is that Halle Bailey was cast to play Ariel. So this is probably gonna look nothing like how she actually looks in the movie, but I was still trying to take the live action aspect of it into account. So for example, I drew Flounder as a more realistic looking fish. I drew Sebastian as a more realistic looking crab. They're still cartoony because my style just is cartoony but the designs are a little more realistic. I made her hair look a little closer to Hallie's hair although I don't know if her hair is actually gonna be red in the in the movie we don't know they might not even keep the iconic red hair look who knows but for the sake of this drawing and because I felt like drawing a character with red hair I gave her the red hair. I also tried giving her more details in general extra little beaded bits and little shells on her. I gave her extra fins on her sides and I made her tail fin shaped a bit differently than Ariel's because Ariel's is more like two, two eyeball shaped. I don't know how to describe that shape. Two eye shaped fins, but I felt like one more solid fin would make more sense, kind of like what a shark or a dolphin has. And I decided there would be no definitive line where her, her tail area meets her torso, it's gonna fade into it more. That way it doesn't look like she's just wearing a fin, like she just slipped it on like clothing. It's gonna look like it transitions from the human skin into the scales. Also, her head was too big for my liking in my initial sketch, so I scanned it and scaled her head down and then printed it off, and then that is what I'm tracing over right here is the printout. And now that she's all outlined, it is time to color her in. So, the Ohuhu markers is my first time using Ohuhu markers in general, and I really, really like these. Oh my gosh. The brush nib is just ever so thicker than a Copic nib, but the firmness is pretty similar. I would say just slightly more firm than a Copic marker. I have some new ones I just got recently and there's one I never used at all. And so I was testing that Copic nib against the Ohuhu nib and they were quite similar. But like I said, Ohuhu's is just a little firmer. I tested a new Copic because as you use markers, the nibs soften up over time and become more flexible. And eventually they'll even degrade and start falling apart. I have some Copic nibs that are getting a little questionable, but I've never had to actually replace one yet. So I have no idea how long Ohuhu's nibs will last in the long run. I have no idea how quickly they'll degrade, but I'm sure they'll at least last you the life of the marker itself because once the marker runs out of ink, that is it. You cannot refill it because Ohuhu does not have refills. <gasps> oh, and they also do not sell their markers individually. So if you run out of ink in a marker, what are you supposed to do? You can't refill it and you can't buy a replacement. You would have to buy a whole new set. Because initially I thought, okay, there's no refills. That's a bummer. But the markers are so cheap, you could just buy a replacement one. But no, you can't. 
And speaking of cheap, let's talk about the price. So I got it on Amazon. It was $55 Canadian for 48 markers. So that's barely over a dollar each and converted to US dollars. It's $42, which is under a dollar each. And I'm sure on the US Amazon, it's even cheaper than that. I tried looking it up, but since they're currently not in stock, the whole listing is gone. I couldn't even find it. So I don't know what they charge, but it would probably be less than the $42. So that is under a dollar for a brush tip marker. That is just wild. It is nuts and these are nice. They don't feel super cheap either. These are really nice qualities. So I don't know if you're looking to at least get a starter marker set or something, I think this is the one to get. My favorite brands so far for Copic alternatives have been the Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers I recently tried and the Blick Studio markers. I think the Blick ones are the most similar to Copics I've tried but uh, these Ohuhus are also a very, very nice. And I prefer these over the Spectrum Noir ones. But the Ohuhu just lose a lot of points for that lack of refills. Although I have seen people who will buy Copic refills and refill their Ohuhu markers with that. So that is an option. You just find a similar enough color and fill it with that. I'm definitely gonna be clearing out some space in my Copic display stand to make room for these markers because I have some multi-liners and pencils and pens on the top row that do not need to be there. So. I'm gonna be making some space for these Ohuhus. In the past, anytime I tried a new marker type, I would just end up giving them away in the future, but these ones, I think I'm actually gonna hang on to them. I almost regret getting rid of my Blick Studio brush markers because those were so nice, but it's just, it gets to a point as a YouTuber where you don't need all the same art supplies over and over again. Like you don't need a million sets of markers. And so who knows, maybe these Ohuhus will be given away someday, but for now, I'm gonna keep them. Even though this set had a lot of mid-tones, I didn't feel all too limited while I was making this art. Well, I also chose the character based off of what colors I had. There were a lot of blues and turquoise and there were a lot of reds, so it worked out, but I didn't feel like I was struggling for color selection. Then again, there is nothing super, super pale in this, so maybe that's why. Although, I did wanna add some light blue lines to the background, just wavy lines to give a hint of water but I didn't have a light enough marker for that. So I did cheat a little bit and I used some Copic markers. I used the BG quad zero and triple zero to add those markings in the background. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.